Hey guys, Mike here. So we got a massive week coming up with huge, huge earnings, which we're gonna go over each one of those. I'm also gonna start off with you know, what drives the business cycle? Is this the start of a new business cycle? You get to see the chart I'm talking about. Uh, also, something that's going all over the internet, what smart money versus dumb money is doing. I'll kind of explain that to you, uh, which could make sense as to why you're seeing a lot of money flow into uh, three-year treasuries right now. Uh, also, we're going to talk about you know the setup for this week versus actually long-term setup. You'll get to see what I'm talking about on that. And we're going to some individual uh, charts as well, especially like NVIDIA and stuff, uh, because they had a, a huge reversal Friday. Now, the thing obviously that drives the business cycle you're talking about is new orders versus the inventories, right? And you can look this up either way. I like to do new orders versus inventories. You can do new orders uh, minus inventories uh, on the ISM. But when you look at this to the right, where I got a circle, that's where we're at now, right? We know it had a huge inventory problem. But you can see inventories are still above new order. And you can see the squares I got circled here because I'm doing a whole members video on this. So I kind of took a clip from it. But you can see how you got that jaws where it opens up, where inventories are way down, new orders are way up. That means to get to that point, it is a it is a big time growing economy, right? You got new orders just flowing in, inventories are shrinking, stuff's hard to come by, whatever. And then you'll see the jaws close. Okay, that's when things start to slow down. And that's what you saw happen. If you look to the right over there in that square, that was 2022. New orders were drawing down. Inventories were skyrocketing up. That's not what you want to see. That's not a good growth story, okay? And again, if you remember, you'll get to see this where I literally point out the business cycle. I'll, I'll show you on a certain chart of it. And you'll, it flows smooth as silk. So uh, obviously something else I'll just track for us. Now, you're starting to see the smart money, dumb money, you know, confidence indicator come out. And you can see it's, hugely spread right like smart money is way down at the bottom uh dumb money which is supposedly us we're not dumb but still it's way up at the top and normally when you look at the chart up above that's the s p that's when you get some kind of pullback but it doesn't mean that you know smart money is selling out of their positions at all it just means their confidence in what they see happening in the short term might not look very good just because it's been such a huge run and everything again this could be another one of those indicators is broken because there's been a lot of indicators that have absolutely failed over the last three months especially since we've been on this huge run so what to see again this is something else i'll do a member's video on. i actually found a video actually explaining to them hey this is how this works okay now it could explain why there is a lot of big inflows going into the zero to three month uh, treasury bond etf you can see right there a big spike just come up in july and, and it's not us flowing in there but definitely uh, more of the bigger players flowing in there because there has just been such an enormous run right now and we're approaching you know critical levels doesn't mean we're gonna go down, just means we're approaching some you know, pretty heavy resistance. And guys, before we continue, if you're getting anything out of this, please hit that thumbs up down there, I really appreciate it. And if you like the material here and the videos, think about subscribing. And also, if you saw yesterday's video, if you didn't, I'll put it at the end. You know, there's just a lot of question marks right now. Again, if you saw that video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you didn't, uh, just click on this video and just give it a quick watch. That's all it is, uh, good information to know. Now. Looking at, you know, what long-term setups versus what, you know, short-term, right? Which we expect. And what do you see going on in all three charts here? And when we look at the monthly, which obviously we're talking long-term here, what do you see? A bullish MACD cross on the S&P. When you look back in the past, this meant over the long period of time, obviously you've had nice run-ups and stuff. And then when you go over here, what do you see on the queues? Same thing, right? Happened a couple months ago and it's been moving up uh, nicely and stuff. And then about the cross is when it starts to turn up. You can see that's when it actually starts to happen. But when you get the cross... Doesn't mean it's going to go straight up, but it means overall it goes up. Anytime you look at the historical chart of it, well, what do you see going on at IWM now? It's finally not quite happened. We're getting very close to a bullish crossover and also coming over the zero into the positive, uh, which was, seems like it's been quite a while since it's been there. But if that happens, then obviously you can see a big move up for it. Okay, more rotation. Uh, what do you see on the short term here on the hourly and stuff? Well, Let's look up the MACD on this one and look at some things here. You got a couple of gaps there sitting there. And what do you see on the hourly? You got a bearish MACD cross. When this happens, normally you'll get between like a 1% to 3% pullback. You know, hourly is obviously shorter than the monthly. So, you know, it could happen. I mean, right there when it happened, we ended up selling down. And you end up selling down for about 1.27%. Happened right here as well. You end up selling down for about 2.5%. So anywhere in there, but it actually, you know, when you look at, it, I mean, there's another one where happened, you know, one percent. But when you look at that, it actually, be really healthy for it because if it did go ahead and sell down between one to two percent somewhere, let's say, 
Obviously, you get to fill that gap. You get to fill this gap right here. Maybe get a bounce off that trend line. So again, it's just something to keep in mind. It'll, it'll hit some support. We'll see if the support actually holds and stuff. And so, you know, what we'll to see on that one. But again, when you look at the Qs, you got the same thing. You got two gaps that need to be filled. You got a bearish MACD cross on the hourly. And so, you know, obviously hitting major resistance at 382 as well. So it makes sense to come down and just fill the gaps and it'll be very healthy. If you're looking for moves up, this would actually be a very healthy thing. The only time you'll be unhappy about this is if you're sitting here holding calls going into Monday. It don't mean it's going to happen, obviously. But I mean, when you look at that, then yeah, I mean, it's just something to keep in mind. Comparing a monthly to an hourly chart here is two different things happening. And something else, of course, to keep in mind is we pull up the RSI on the daily uh, for the QQQ. I mean, you can see right there. What's been happening since June 15th, you got higher highs. What's happening on the RSI, you got lower highs. And so a little bearish divergence there. What we'll to see if this plays out. You saw it on Microsoft and a few other stocks we pointed out. Uh, the other thing to look at is what's going on with the sectors, right? So pretty much Friday, a lot of red. But one thing you saw was green was healthcare. And healthcare is starting to get in, into that area now. Well, when you compare it to like technology and others, it's just getting at these extremes, same way IWM did versus the spire, the Qs. You know, starting to get those levels where you start to see bounces. Could this go lower? Absolutely, it's been lower many, many, many years ago, uh, as I showed you. But again, you start to get in these areas where you kind of start to get bounces. But you can see back in the what is that, 2000 or 99, whatever it is. I mean, it definitely went lower. That, that's for sure. So it could continue uh, to get pummel and stuff. And maybe you don't get a bounce in that. But if we compare it to other things, like let's compare it to XLE, see how, how it's performing against that. And you can see, you know, it, it's holding its own. It's moving up, doing a little bit better. Uh, I mean, you can look on the right right there and just clearly see a trend line moving up. Compare it to the financials, which have been struggling. What do you see? The financials have actually been outdoing it, right? It's been coming down. But when you look at that trend line, if we draw it in here, it looks like, hey, could we be getting a bounce in the near future? Yeah, absolutely could be getting a near bounce. That could be the third touch when we get a bounce. So keep an eye on healthcare. A lot of people are calling for this bounce for a while. But again, I think this comes back to that narrative. Is, are we actually going to hit a, see a recession or not see a recession? Healthcare tends to do much better in recession because guess what? People get sick no matter what. And so just keep that in mind. Now, going to individual stocks, you see BABA, obviously China keeps pumping out news that they're going to try to help these tech stocks and everything. And you got that inverse head and shoulders. That's basically, it's an ugly neckline, I know, but uh, basically just came back down and retested that. Also that 95 uh, support area. And so we could get a bounce on this. I think all Chinese stocks are red on Friday because it was a major sell-off for profit taking. Now, Google was actually green. Again, we're moving up into the supply area right here. We're back up in that golden pocket. We haven't been able to make it above it. And again, we'll see what happens if we get the push and stuff. When you look on the weekly on this right here, you can see there's a volume gap right there to the right and so you know 135 136 you know is in the cards and stuff but keep in mind also i mean what's crazy to think of it is as much as these big mega caps have had big runs i mean google is still setting 18 percent off the all-time high right and so uh, just keep that in mind as well and amd we talked about this one it is a constructive chart again a lot of support sitting down there with the 50 that trend line which has bounced up multiple times plenty of people buying up the 110 but one thing that's tough to always gauge is semiconductors are cyclical, right? When they are hot, they are hot. When they are not, they are not. And right now, you're starting to see that kind of AI just kind of play. It's kind of taking a break right now. I mean, it's going to kick back in. But you saw that huge reversal in NVIDIA we're going to get back into. And again, you know, I got 102, you know, marked on here because uh, it's where you see that support at the volume node over there. And so, you know, if we end, end up getting a sell off here, this could come down to 102. I think people will buy it up like hotcakes if it does for sure. But again, if it doesn't, you know, and somebody better just stay hot and the AI play stays hot, you know, you, it, this is going back to 130. That's, that's just the way it's going to be. So, again, we'll have to see what happens here. If all of them, this right here to me is the most constructive chart at least because it's kind of built out support at different levels uh, instead of doing these crazy, crazy. Uh, runs like some others have now nvidia obviously saw a huge breakout i mean this thing just took off in the morning on friday and over the last three days it's just been on a tear uh, after breaking out of that formation but then 10 30 hit and this thing sold off uh you know like it had leprosy or something i mean but you see here i mean this is what three days 13 percent for such a large stock is unbelievable right i mean you don't think it can go any higher and it just keeps going but then 10 30 hit and then bam uh, big money dumped it like a hot cake. Now, of course, close the gap. That's a good thing right there. Why did it sell off? I didn't see any news that was spooking anybody or anything. 
And again, the one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at all these big mega caps as we get to reweighting the NASDAQ 100 and stuff is the valuation. That's why I can't wait to see this earnings season just to see or how long it takes to kind of grow in these multiples. You know, but when you're sitting there with a selling at 44 times sales, 237 P to E ratio, and then you start comparing this to these other mega caps and stuff. And again, obviously, we're coming into this AI craze like we've never had it before. And, and of course, you know, NVIDIA does hold the picks and shovels, right, for the ones who can't afford those chips. And, you know, that's what I'm saying about AMD. AMD is the second choice because their, chi their chips are cheaper and they're only about 80% as fast, they report. But again, everybody can't afford, uh, can't afford NVIDIA chips, right? But when you compare it to what big money is looking at, and you go, okay, price of sales on Google is 5.6. Price sales on Microsoft is 12.3. Price sales on Apple is 7.8. Price sales on Meta is 6.8. Uh, price of sales on Netflix, 6.3. Price sales on AMD is 8.1. Price sales on Tesla is 10.2. And then you got Amazon sitting there at a price sales of 2.6. And all the rest of these companies will be reporting fairly soon versus NVIDIA has got some time to report, but we'll have to see Obviously, they put a big number out there. The more important part is whether they hit that or not. It's about what they say about you know the quarter proceedings. And then we'll get to find out, is this double or a triple or like, what's going on here? And then where does big money really want to, or see how long they see this playing out before they grow into this valuation, how long they will give them to grow into this uh, valuation. Because you know if anybody's done multiple expansion, boy, I'll tell you, it's definitely NVIDIA, right? They're the kings of it right now. But you just kind of see how it plays out. And a lot of the other companies, because I said before, it's, it's going to take a while. If a lot, of the, a lot of the other companies won't monetize AI. They, they're going to say it. They're riding the coattails of NVIDIA and these other companies, and they'll crash and burn like they always do, right? The semiconductors, which I should have said in the video before, and thank you for somebody in the comments correcting me, was the fact they actually have uh, the first mover's advantage, right? They have the chips. You can't build out your technology platforms without them, okay? Now, whether or not they're going to be, you know, be able to re meet these metrics they put out there we're going to have to find out only time is going to tell okay so that's the key and then can these other uh, companies who are having to spend a bunch of money you know how long is it going to take to actually monetize those platforms and will it actually uh, be breaking in as much dough as they think is going to rake in that's what you got to find out so again that's only time is going to tell that only time is going to tell that now earnings boatload of big earnings coming out this week okay and when you look at this right here monday Again, you're gonna you're gonna have these regional banks coming out and stuff, but you will have bigger banks reporting on Tuesday. Bank of America, Charles Schwab, Morgan Stanley, and not just banks, financial firms, of course. Uh, and then you'll have your regionals right here reporting, and right the brokers is gonna come out after close on Tuesday. You have JB Hunt, Pinnacle, uh, you know, a bunch of look at all, look at all these regional banks, and you really want to listen to what they have to say. That's what I really want to hear what they got to say. Okay, Goldman Sachs comes out Wednesday. ASML is gonna come out. Howard Burton, U.S. Bank Court. Uh, who else we got a bunch of more regional banks coming out and then of course the big daddy tesla and netflix is coming out after close on wednesday united airlines ibm alcoa discover so again loaded this week a lot of volatility is going to be happening right taiwan semiconductors coming out thursday morning american airlines they're going to tell us how much we're still traveling you can just imagine that johnson and johnson dr horton for housing they're hitting all-time new highs right uh, intuitive surgical capital one csx and so here's a bunch of more regional banks i mean I don't, what is that like 40 regional banks this week coming out then on friday american express you have huntington and you have more regional banks uh, coming out as well now as far as economics it's not a, a, anything major i think really not until you get you know i mean retail we'll want to hear about that are we actually on the 18th actually still spending the odds are yes because prices are still going up and stuff and then of course you'll have more data coming out when it comes to employment stuff. Everybody wants to hear about that. That's not coming out to the 20th. You might want to hear the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index. It tends to be pretty accurate compared to all the rest of them. Is it turning around? Again, that talks about the kind of like the business cycle I was talking about with orders and things like that. We'll find out a little more about it. So just you know, keep that one in mind. But besides that, I don't see any economic data is going to be shifting anything. I think this is all about earnings. Again, the bar is still somewhat low, but we're going to have to see. You know, remember the big boys have been calling for earnings apocalypses since last, you know, Christmas, and it hadn't happened. Okay, and we are in this major uptrend now. So, you know, the big question you're going to get to find out on this one is who is actually hitting earnings. But it's not about hitting earnings because we all know if you've been doing this long enough, there are plenty of ways to hit your earnings numbers. Okay, I mean, that, that's, there's plenty of counting tricks to do that. 
it's really about the forecast. Like, what are you going to see coming down the line and stuff? And again, how much more can they keep raising these prices? Like, how much longer are we going to keep paying these this kind of money for airline tickets, for cars, for groceries, everything? Like, how much longer is that going to continue to go on? And what do they see uh, on that front? You've heard the airlines. They're like, man, we got a two to three year like runway on this one. And so, you know, like, oh, okay, great, you know, but that's just what we got to find out. I think it's going to go sector by sector. Let me know in the comments uh, if there's anybody on that list as far as earnings uh, that you're going to be playing or, or you see maybe will surprisingly either disappoint or actually just crush earnings. So uh, let me know what you think about that. So hope you guys got some out of it. I'll be here all week. I'll keep you updated and stuff. Appreciate you watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you got anything out of this and I will see you tomorrow.